Hey guys, happy Friday. Uh, it's Obi here. Um, today we're going to continue on talking about gears. So up until this point, we have only really talked about simple gears. And what I mean by simple gears is where we only have one drive and one driven. <clears throat> um, we're going to make it a little bit more complex now, and we're going to talk about gear trains. So gear trains <coughs> are when more than one set of gears are connected. So we see this a lot of times. Uh, transmissions are a classic example of gear trains. Um, pretty much every gear in a manual or automatic transmission is set up of more than one set of gears. <clears throat> so the important thing about a gear train is that to define the ratio of a gear train we have to find the ratio for each individual set of gears and then we have to multiply them together. So here's an example of a gear train or a complex gear setup. So we can see that we have gear A, which is this big gear, which is connected to the small gear, which is gear B, and that gear is physically connected to gear C, which is this larger gear on the outside, and that is the drive gear for gear D. So we can tell that the uh, gear A is spinning eh, somewhat fixed, I mean uh, somewhat fast. And we can definitely see that gear B is spinning faster than gear A is. Um, and then we can also tell that by the arrows, gear C is actually spinning the same rotational speed as gear B. But then we can finally see gear D here is spinning really, really fast. So that is our, our gear reduction that we have, uh, which means this is an underdrive setup, which means the output is spinning lower but has more torque okay <clears throat> so to calculate this it's really going to be pretty similar to what we would do with just a simple gear setup we just have to do that calculation twice <clears throat> so this here is a pretty good example of a transmission um, if you were to look at a transmission power flow this is kind of what we're going to see. So we have our input shaft from the engine and a gear. And then that gear connects to this gear on what's called the lay shaft or the main shaft. Then those gears, so this will spin and this will force all of these to spin as well. And it will transmit power through these gears and out through the output shaft. So it's important for you to know that these gears actually rotate freely on this shaft. And this component here, when we shift into fifth gear, it comes over and it actually locks this gear to the shaft. <clears throat> so we only have one of these gears transmitting power at any one time. So our power flow for first gear would be in, down through the lay shaft, over to this gear, and up. And then this blue piece would be over and locked to it. And then our power transmits straight through. Coincidentally, if we're in fifth gear, it's going to go through the input shaft, through the gears, through the lay shaft, over to fifth, up, and then this piece would be locked in here, and it would continue on. <clears throat> so when we calculate, um, we're going we're gonna to do an example on this one today. I think you guys pretty well understand how to do this, so I just want to explain how we're on one example, and then we'll get you guys doing your assignment. <clears throat> so if you were to look at this, we see we have a drive and a driven. So our drive is 30 teeth and our driven is 21. And then on this one, this is now our drive, the 12 teeth, or the 12 tooth gear, and our driven is 36. Okay? So we have two different gear ratios. We have to solve for each one of those to find the gear ratio for this set of gears and then the gear ratio for this set of gears. Then we multiply those together to get our answer. Okay, so our ratio number one, which is going to be here at the front, we will see that uh, we, we don't know our gear ratio, so it is the driven over drive, so 30 over 21. We're going to do that multiplication, and we are going to find out that it ends up equaling, oops, sorry, so our gear ratio of ratio number one is 0 0.7 to 1. So this ratio right here is 0.7 to 1, okay? Now, 
we have to jump over and do ratio 2. So now our drive is 12 and our driven is 36. So we have to do that math again and come up with our second ratio. And when we do that, we are going to see the second ratio is actually 3 to 1. So the important thing is that we have to multiply the ratio from both of those gears together to equal our true gear ratio. So our first ratio is 0.7 to 1, and our second ratio is 3 to 1. So if we add or we multiply both of those together, our final ratio for second gear and this transmission would be 2.1 to 1, which means the input shaft here is going to spin 2.1 times for every one revolution of the output. Okay? <clears throat> I think you guys understand that. Um, I, I just, uh, it, it's a little bit more complicated. We're just adding one more step. And I, I think you guys can handle it without really any issue. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we are actually going to do this, and we're going to find the gear ratios of an entire transmission on our assignment today. So I know you guys said you liked the Microsoft Forms and the way we did it. I do want to try another worksheet. I think I have figured out the issues, what's going on. So we're going to go to Teams, and um, so when you go to your assignment tomorrow or today, you will find out that your, your assignment is going to be Gears Day 3. Now this is how it was supposed to work before. So when we do this, we see that we have a document up in the top right corner. We need to hit the little page symbol with the pencil, and that will bring it up, and we can load this. Now if you see, I already have some information on this. I had to borrow Ethan's username and password so I could try it as a student to see what was supposed to happen. So your worksheet tomorrow, or today, I'm sorry, is 10 questions where we have to solve for the missing ratio. And then we have to find the power flow through each transmission, okay? Or <clears throat> through each gear in this transmission. So you guys need to find the, uh, the ratio for each gear. And don't forget, you have to add the first ratio or multiply the first ratio by the second ratio. So if you guys pay attention at the top, you will see we have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's each individual gear. And you will do the calculation for the input where the 30 and the 24 is. And then you have to do the second calculation. Just remember, and let's go back to the PowerPoint where I can point at this. So, I'll tell you what, I'll go right back to the PowerPoint. But what I'll do now is I just want to let you guys know, I've already edited this and I've added information in. When you are done, all you have to do is hit the back button in the top left corner. That will go back to here. And then you can close it. And if you go back to Teams... This information is already edited and updated, okay? So all you have to do is type it in. You don't need to save it. When you get done, you're going to click the Turn In button in the top right corner. So when you click the Turn In button, it'll say it's turned in after you're done doing the assignment, and then that submits it, and we can see it, and we can grade it. That should be all you've had to do. The reason we ran into such a problem with the previous one is because apparently that was an older file format, and that causes all kinds of problems with Microsoft Teams that I did not know about. Okay, so we're going to go back to our PowerPoint really quick, and then we'll be done. that Let's get back to where we gotta be so I want to hit on one last point and I want you guys to understand that this ratio here is the same for every gear so you guys only have to solve this one time and then as long as you keep that answer you can put that into your calculation for the rest so you'll have to solve for each individual gear for this ratio but then you're just multiplying it times this one for each range Okay, if that doesn't make sense, give me a call or text me or whatever, and I will help you out. But that's all you have to do for tomorrow, guys. Um, have a good weekend, and I will see you again on Monday.